This is Star Talk. I want to pick up with Shep on the Event Horizon Telescope because this is still a project under development. You're talking about we will observe, we hope to observe, and there are these two objects. So first of all, when do you expect to start making these uh, first pictures of the black hole at the center of our galaxy, and why are you going to do this? Good, good questions. Um, so we started off on the Event Horizon Telescope project by linking three radio telescopes around the world together in Hawaii, in Arizona, and California. And the first thing we uh, realized was that the supermassive black hole in the center of our galaxy, Sagittarius A star, had a size that was predicted by this shadow feature. So 100 years ago, Einstein came up with this idea that a black hole would cast a shadow, and we saw exactly that size. And that really got us excited. Right? Because with only three telescopes, all we can do is tell the size of the black hole. Now we want to build um, instrumentation and put it at all the other telescopes that we can around the world to fill in this Earth-sized telescope, and then we can make an image. Because the whole reason for doing this is to look at the size and shape of that shadow, predicted again by Einstein, to test whether Einstein's theories break down at the edge of a black hole and also to study the dynamics of matter around the black hole. Now, will you really be looking all the way at the event horizon? I mean, after all, light can orbit a black hole, but, you know, to actually get all the way to the shadow, are you really seeing the event horizon, or are you seeing a little bit further out? You, you see, you wind up seeing a little bit further out. There's something called the last photon orbit. And light, as fast as it goes, also is constrained to orbit around the black hole. Yes. That's how deformed the space-time is. It's a crazy, crazy place. You could stand there with a flashlight, and look at the back of your head. Yeah, or you could illuminate the back of your head. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then it would bounce the back off of your head, head and yeah. you'd see it in front of you. So if you were having a bad hair day, you would know it immediately, uh, basically. Because <laughs> that's what you're worried about when you're, you know, right outside a black hole. Yeah, wouldn't your hair automatically become bad just because it's kind of being sucked towards it? <laughs> <laughs> like how much of it would... You would see how bad it was. You right? think that's your hair important. feels gravity more strongly <laughs> than the rest of you? That's the spaghettification of your hair. Right. Your hair might sort of be in. left behind. Would it kind of be more frizzy or would it be more like high? volume like what kind of shampoo would you need to use there might be hole? special black hole products i think we've just started somebody right now is scratching out a memo <laughs> at their I, pharmaceutical company just something else for women to be upset and worried about <laughs> right more ways to oppress women <laughs> like what would happen to your limbs would you like would cellulite be changed near a black hole how we <laughs> Matt, okay, you're okay, fired. Okay, I, I was going to endorse the hair, hair care products, but I'm not going to touch that one. 